This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. God, as it is the last Sunday of the year, we want to talk about thanksgiving today. We want to talk to you about thanksgiving, thanking God. God has done so much for us and uh, it is right to stop and thank God, especially at this time. When you talk about thanking God, um, it's not enough to do it only on the last Sunday of the year. It's not even enough to do it on every Sunday of the year. We need every day, we need to do it every day and we hope and uh, trust that you are doing that. But uh, on a day like this, at the end of this year, it's amazing to look back and see what God has done in our lives and to thank God very specially. <coughs> a lot of things we could say about it, but we're going to use as our guide for today in this matter of thanksgiving, Psalm 138. Psalm 138, we're going to limit our meditation on thanksgiving to this. This is a psalm written by David. 
If there's anyone you want to learn thanksgiving from, it's probably David. David was no perfect man. He had a lot of faults, like most human beings. He had flaws and so on. But when it comes to thanking and praising God, there's few people who do it like David. There's few people who can teach us like David. And I'm hoping that you have a lot of things that you can learn from David or at least be reminded of by the way David does it. David shows us through this psalm several things about thanksgiving. How we should give thanks. These are the kinds of things we'll be looking at today. How does David give thanks? The manner in which he gives the thanks. Also, why does David give thanks? Right? The reasons for giving thanks. Right? All these are lessons for us. Also, when we thank God, what does God get as a result? Right? What does God get? Also, finally, when we thank God, what do we get out of it? Our personal benefit. This psalm addresses all those things. And let's begin with the first thing. How, in what manner does David thank God? For this, you simply have to take a brief look at verse 1 and 2 and you will quickly uh, see how he does it. Look at verse 1 and 2. The first thing is the word, I give you thanks, that itself indicates the manner in which David thanks God, right? Psalm 138 verse 1, let me read it. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Now, let's, we'll come to with my whole heart later. But before that, just that opening line, I give you thanks. You may say, well, that doesn't indicate how he's thanking. No, in the English, you're right, it doesn't indicate, it just says, I give you thanks. But... The Hebrew word there behind this is not a um, simple thank you like what we would say today, right? There's something more there and if you look at it, it indicates how David gives thanks. You know, today we would uh, say a simple thank you. Somebody does something good for us, we go and just tell them thank you, you know. We could tell it very privately. It can just be between them and us. We can just send them a text message. Nobody else will ever know that we thanked them. David is not talking about thanking God in that manner. I will give you thanks privately between you and me. It's an individual matter. No. In fact, they say there is no equivalent for the simple English thank you in the Hebrew language, at least at the time. When David says, I will give you thanks, what he means is, I will publicly acknowledge what you've done for me and thank you in public. Big difference, not private, but public acknowledgement. In that word, the Hebrew word there is yada and it involves acknowledgement. It is a, it is a, without acknowledgement, you cannot be giving thanks. It involves telling others what God has done for us. So not just thanking God. Now, sure, we should do that. In our quiet time and so on, we should thank God definitely. But what we're trying to say is, thanksgiving in the Psalms goes beyond that. It assumes you are thanking God privately, but it goes beyond that to say, thanksgiving is where you publicly acknowledge what God has done for you. And that's why some translation says, I give you praise. I praise you, right? Some translations will say, I give you praise. Some translations will say, I give you thanks. Why? Because both are mixed. Praising God is declaring who he is and what he has done. Thanking God is thanking him for what he has done for you. But in the Bible's concept of praise or thanksgiving, it's both. It's declaring who God is and what he has done in your life specifically. Who God has proved himself to be in your life. What God has done in your life. You realize that, you open your mouth and... And you publicly, in front of others, acknowledge. So how does David give thanks? Number one, he publicly acknowledges what God has done in his life. Um, a preacher gives an example to explain this. He talks about how a medical missionary, a doctor, 
um, was doing ministry in an area. So medical missionaries, they don't just preach the gospel, they actually give medical treatment. So this medical missionary, he spotted a great need in that particular place. In that particular place, the need was, uh, uh, the problem there was, people were suffering from what is called progressive blindness, which is they're born with perfect eyesight or good eyesight, so nobody thinks anything is wrong, but as they age, slowly their eyesight becomes worse and worse and worse to the point where they almost completely lose it, basically, become blind. And this problem, they say, is sometimes uh, found in certain areas with certain peoples and so on. And this missionary was in such a place and he found out, okay, this is a big problem here. So he came up with a solution and he started doing a procedure to arrest that progressive blindness. So the, the uh, eyesight would get worse for people, but then he would give this treatment, this operation he would do, which would stop that from worsening further. Arrest the progressive blindness so that at least their eyesight will be partially or in some cases greatly saved. So a lot of people came to him, it seems. This is a true incident, by the way. It's about um, a real missionary who, who went about doing this, and that's what they say. Um, I don't know. I don't have any way, way of verifying it. But, but nevertheless, so a lot of people went to him for, to, to get that procedure done. And it seems after, they would, after the operation was completed, after the surgery was completed, they, would, they wouldn't tell him a simple thank you. Instead, they will say something like this in their language. I will tell your name. It seems they will tell that doctor, I will tell your name. And he wondered for some time, why aren't they just simply saying thank you? <laughs> no, they didn't say thank you. They said, I will tell your name and then they'll go, it seems. So later the doctor found out in that particular language, there is no equivalent to thank you. <laughs> you cannot say simply thank you. The way you say it is, I will tell your name, which means I will go tell what you have done. That is the Hebrew concept. That is the concept in the Psalms of thanksgiving. I will tell your name. Look at some, uh, look at that verse 1 and 2 again. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, you see, before someone is doing it. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down, verse 2, I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name. I will tell your name. How does David give thanks? Publicly acknowledges what God has done for him. Next thing, how does David give thanks? Before the gods, before the gods. This is related with publicly acknowledging, right? Before people he's doing it, but here there's a very strange expression which says before the gods. What does that mean? That sounds almost uh, wrong, you know, before the gods. Well, there are various ways in which people have understood this. One is, uh, some people have taken it in this sense, that is, it's referring to angels or heavenly beings. Martin Luther, John Calvin took it in that way, right? Because some places it refers to that kind of thing. Uh, some other people say it is really referring to other gods. Not in the sense that there are other gods, other than Jehovah or something like that, but the time and place where David was living, his situation, his culture, society and so on, is surrounded by people who believe in multiple gods, the plurality of gods. And so in his setting, David is saying, people all around me are believing in many gods and among those people, I will publicly acknowledge you, my God, and say what you have done for me. And I, I think that is a very possible option, especially given uh, that not only Israel's neighbors believed in multiple gods, Israel themselves, <laughs> Israel themselves, if you look at their history clearly, correctly, you will find that they never left, they, 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 they never reached a point <laughs> where all of them strongly believed in only one God. <laughs> very strange. All, at all, almost all points in their history, there were some people in their midst, among the Israelites themselves, who would uh, give place to other gods, who would sometimes engage in worship of other gods and so on. You see this in some very key families. Jacob's own wife, Rachel, entertained to a certain degree other gods. 
David's own wife, Michael. David's own wife. You read in other places, she had, she didn't cut off her connection completely from the other gods of the surrounding regions. You see, the Israelites they were surrounded by uh, the people who believed in multiple gods, and so they were influenced. They found it very difficult sometimes to completely cut away and say, "No, we believe in only one God," and so on. And so, what happened oftentimes is God had to stress that. That's why He gave the commandment saying, "Thou shalt have no other gods before Me." That's the main commandment. But they broke it again and again. In fact, Moses is bringing the Ten Commandments down from the mountain, and they already broke it actually. And they kept on breaking it throughout their history. You read it. So they themselves had a big problem. So David is saying, in the midst of this kind of people, I will publicly acknowledge you before the gods. But that's the third option, which I think is probably the best option here. But both, you know, number two as well as uh, third option is this: that he is talking about kings or judges or great ones, great people of the earth. Great people of the earth. Why do we get this idea? Because just come down to verse four. He's talking about kings in verse four, right? And so, in some settings, these kings, these great men, were considered almost like gods. And so, perhaps he's talking about that: great kings or judges or great people with wealth or power or influence. And he's saying, "I will publicly, publicly acknowledge you, O Lord, what you have done for me before everyone, even before the great ones." He himself is king, and he's thinking of people on his level. You know. Point is, I'll do it publicly before everyone who's thought of as great, whether it be other gods or people. So he'll publicly acknowledge before the gods. How else does he thank God? What manner, right? How else does he do it? With my whole heart. Look at verse one. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Everybody say whole heart. There's two things there: heart and then whole heart. Right? Heart tells us that thanksgiving is supposed to come from the heart, which is we need to be reminded of that today because we are used to many times in today's world just thanking people with our lips and mouth. Because thank, giving thanks today, saying thank you, has become good manners. Right to the point where if somebody doesn't say thank you, they are considered uncivilized, not knowing good manners and so on. So, just to give the appearance of good manners, sometimes we will say thank you. Doesn't mean it's coming from our heart or something. It's just coming from here. We just want to show we are good. No, no. David doesn't thank God like that. It's from the heart, and from the heart doesn't only mean heart. When the Old Testament says heart, it also involves the mind. What is meant is the entire inner person, not the outer person, the body, but the inner person. What David is trying to say is, I don't thank you only with my outer being. I thank you, Lord, from my innermost being, which means my heart, my mind, my spirit, my soul. What all you cannot see, the inner person. That means what? The mind is involved, thoughts is involved, thinking is involved. Some people think when it comes to praising and thanking God, you can put your mind on the shelf. You know, no need mind, right? Just uh, clap the hands and just uh, get all excited. Just emotion, just heart. No need for. No, it's not a mental act. No, no, it is a mental activity. You will see how much David is thinking. I'll show you in a bit. There's a lot of thinking going on. There's a lot of processing going on. And so David is saying, with my entire inner being. With my heart and mind, my spirit and soul, in spirit and in truth, I give you thanks. He says, "Whole heart." Notice that whole heart. Whole heart means one thing is he's saying my heart has a single focus, single focus. You know, sometimes when we are praising or thanking God, when we are engaging in that activity, um, we are guilty of having multiple fo focus, right? Our focus is not single. You know, especially in today's world, it's very difficult to have single focus. We are always doing multiple things. People who can do multiple things at the same time are hailed as very great uh, ones. You know, ones who can drive and talk on the phone, take care of kids and do their work. 
we are always doing multiple things at the same time and we think it's a great skill you know so we come to praise and thank god we are also doing the same thing sometimes we are singing oh god you are great and looking what is happening there who's you know come and who's not come today what they are wearing it just comes naturally doesn't it david says i give you thanks with my whole heart means my entire inner being has one focus and that is to give you thanks lord he also means not just single focus he also means my entire inner being all the energy of it i devote to giving thanks not just single focus whole heart means all the energy is devoted to this task of thanksgiving all the energy energy yeah what does that word tell you you know energy effort right thanksgiving is not an ordinary thing for david when he says with my whole heart what he means is with my entire inner being single focus all of it directed there all the energy all the effort of my thinking and my feeling and everything i devote to thanking you o lord Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. love endures forever for the life it's been reborn is love endures forever forever.